Well, there is just one day for Legacy Health and Regents to agree on a new insurance reimbursement plan. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Adams. As we get closer to a decision that could leave tens of thousands of patients looking for care, our Sydney Dorner spent the day hearing from both sides. And Sydney, can you break down why they can't come to an agreement? Yes, John. So this is how it works. Legacy provides health care for people in Oregon and Southwest Washington. Regents is a health insurance company covering 200,000 people who have legacy doctors. Right now, they need to decide on a new payment agreement, but keep going back and forth while patients are left distressed. Knowing you may have a lapse in health care coverage would stress anyone out. But for the 200,000 people covered by Regents with legacy health doctors, that's their reality. We know this is incredibly stressful. We know that um, uh, it is not where anyone wants to be. Legacy Health and Regents can't come to an agreement on a new insurance reimbursement plan. But the deadline for the contract is March 31st. Marin Permit, a health officer at Legacy Health, says Regents sent them their best and final offer a few weeks ago. Since then, the two have gone back and forth with counter offers. Sent them what we feel is a, a real meeting in the middle um, and an opportunity for us to do what's right with our patients. Um, unfortunately, the response that we received from Regents yesterday um, did not recognize that. Regents responded, saying they also want to come to an agreement that would keep patients in network while providing affordable health care. We have offered reimbursement increases that meet many of Legacy's asks to get us closer to an overall agreement only to have their leadership reject our proposals. Because Legacy Health still has some concerns. Particularly uh, the inpatient rates that they've uh, provided and the reimbursement that they have for their commercial members uh, continues to be uh, too low. Regent says they are holding the line on unreasonable provider reimbursement demands because their members, customers and regulators have asked them to rein in the rising cost of health care. Both Legacy Health and Regents will help patients find alternative care if they can't reach an agreement to be proactive with our patients, to let them know what they need to do um, if they're eligible for continuity of care. Now, the contract that Legacy Health and Regents are negotiating could last for two to five years. As we speak, Legacy Health and Regents have not reached a compromise with the contract expiring April 1st. John, back to you. All right, Sydney, thank you so much. It's gorgeous, and you just can't help yourself but get outside on a day like this. Yeah. Oh, it's just a beautiful day, you know, probably the best day of the spring, and everyone's out. Took a while to find a parking spot, but it's gorgeous. Everything's starting to bloom. Uh, get outside today, Yeah. or it's going to start raining soon, so yeah. you better take advantage. <laughs> Wise words for sure. Well, still a bit early for peak rose season, but we did catch up with some people visiting the International Rose Test Garden in Washington Park earlier today, enjoying that warm and sunny weather. And our Ashley Grams is also taking advantage, joining us from the rooftop of our studio right now. Ashley, how's it feeling out there? I know they said better get outside, so I couldn't argue with that. That's for sure. I mean, anytime you can see the sun after what feels like we've had such a long winter, you've got to do it. We're here in the mid 60s right now in the metro area. Lots of blue sky to talk about. So let's take you outside to Aloha right now. This is a live view from our reserve golf course camera. Look at that. You can see the sun shining down. Everybody getting just a little bit of this blue sky today. This is a view from our Chinook winds camera out at Lincoln City. My goodness, I think I saw plenty of people walking down the beach earlier today, taking advantage of it. 58 degrees there in Lincoln City. We've got a little bit of a wind. We've also got a little bit of wind here in the valley as well. So keeping it a little bit cooler for most of us, but still a wonderful opportunity to get outside after all of that rain that we had this past week. Let's take a look at some of those temperatures. So in the metro area, right around that mid 60s mark, mid 60s out in Hillsborough and in southwest Washington as well. For those who are out on the coast, you see the sun and you say, I've got to get to the water. Yeah, me too. Right in the mid 50s there for those of you who are visiting the coast on this Easter weekend. I think the coldest spot on our map is going to be Central Oregon. Yeah, Bend still seeing the tail end of that low pressure system that we saw earlier this week. Some of Southern Oregon seeing that as well, but for most of us, 
we've really risen in temperature. 65 degrees is about 10 degrees higher than we normally see at this time in March. But let's talk through tomorrow, which is Easter Sunday. A lot of us spending that with family and friends going outside with the kids tomorrow morning going to be on the cooler side. So we're looking in the low 40s there in Portland. What I also want to point out to you is uh, that cloud cover out there. So you might wake up in the morning and say, I can't see the sun. Don't worry. As we move through the rest of the day, it's going to warm up into the 50s. We're going to start to see those clouds go away. So of course, afternoon, the best time to get outside. We should hit about that 60 degree mark as we head into the latter half of the afternoon. Now we're talking a lot about sun. Of course, rain is still on the board. We've got that seven day forecast to talk about in just a few minutes. John. All right, Ashley, thank you. We'll see you in a little bit here in the studio. Well, some of the people exploring Washington Park may have ended up eventually at the Oregon Zoo because today the zoo held its hop into spring event. Well, before the pandemic, the event mainly consisted of an Easter egg hunt, and now it's a full day of various activities, added zookeeper talks, plus a DJ at the amphitheater. This is just one of our activities that we do to bring as many people as we can into the zoo just so they get to experience everything that we have here. Oh my gosh, it could not be a better day for all of this, all the families around. It's, it's going to be amazing. Well, the zoo is expected to sell out today with the nice weather, with at least 10,000 people expected to attend today's event. Well, a landslide pauses Amtrak train travel between Seattle and Portland yet again. It happened near Kelso, Washington. Service is expected to resume Sunday afternoon. Amtrak is providing bus transportation in the meantime. And we have new details of last night's deadly stabbing at a Mac station. Police identified the suspect behind the attack as 51 year old Shondell Larkin. Police were called to the 82nd Avenue station at around six last night and found one man dead on the platform. They quickly arrested Larkin after that. Detectives continue to investigate the incident. Now, TriMet did send a statement today. They say they're deeply saddened by what happened last night and are working closely with Portland police and the district's attorney's office. They've also increased security in the area. Did not hear the crash, but started to hear siren after siren. Well, a crash in Southwest Tiger this morning leaves two dead and one with life threatening injuries. It happened on Southwest Roy Rogers near Perth Road. When first responders got there, one of the cars was laying upside down and was on fire. Now we spoke to two people who live nearby. They say since the road work on Roy Rogers had finished, they've seen more traffic and cars going faster. We hear cars racing down here, especially at nighttime, and we cringe because we just know that we're afraid that something like this would happen because it's out of control. At least one of the victims needed fire crews to get them out of their car. Investigators are still looking into what caused this crash. Well, a memorial bike ride was held this afternoon to honor a man killed last month in southeast Portland. 48 year old David Bentley was riding a bike when he was hit by a vehicle on February the 25th. The ride today started at Tom McCall Waterfront Park and ended up in the Buckman neighborhood where Bentley was hit. Bike Loud PDX installed a ghost bike at the site of David's honor. Bentley's mother spoke to us about what type of person her son was. David was one of the greatest people and best friends I've ever had. He took and he was always there for people. He would do anything for you. He would have given his life for someone, which apparently kind of did. And hopefully it reaches enough hearts and enough people to where it has an effect to make changes. Well, the driver that hit and killed Bentley was charged with first degree manslaughter and reckless driving.